Member for City Salt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And once again, instead of addressing the Premier's failed catch and release justice system, the NDP has opted to manipulate the numbers. The Premier only told half of the story when he tried to shift the blame for not doing his job on delivering on the promises that he made. The reality is, is that under this soft on crime premier, the province only seeks detention of violent offenders who breach their bail conditions in 50% of the cases. So if a prolific offender commits a violent crime while out, while out on bail, why on earth wouldn't this government want to, at the very least, make the argument that this person should be held in custody for public safety? Attorney General. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as the member would know, as somebody who's participated in the criminal justice system before, Crown Counsel has the independent uh, charge assessment process. But what we do know um, with the stats that were held and released by the BC Prosecution Service is that when Crown has made an assessment that public safety is at issue or the public confidence in the justice system is at issue and they're seeking detention, then in, in, um, in a majority of time that's denied. <coughs> That's why we're calling on bail reform. It's the law of the land under the criminal code, which is the federal government. We're joining provinces across this country. We're also seeing a rise in repeat violent offenders to call upon the federal government for those changes, and we'll continue to do so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Surrey South Supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and our Attorney General is correct. I do have experience working with our criminal justice system. So I do know for a fact that it is this Attorney General who sets the framework for charge assessments in British Columbia. It's this Attorney General that would be setting the guidelines for what's considered in the public interest. And I can tell you that we've been asking them to consider it in the public interest to put people's safety above the rights of criminals in this province. We can talk about criminality and problems in other provinces, but the reality is, is that BC stands out with its exceptionally low charge approval rates, minimal population of individuals held in custody, and a soaring number of violent criminals. And yesterday's data just validates everything that we have been saying about the NDP's catch and release justice system. Even as this government insists and kept insisting that the system isn't broken, if you're not already seeing the detention, see, if you're not seeking the detention of half of repeat offenders who've already demonstrated, they've already demonstrated that they're in breach of conditions, then there's something wrong with your directive. Meanwhile, four people a day are randomly attacked in Vancouver every single day, Mr. Speaker. So instead of deflecting blame onto judges or the federal government, will the Attorney General take responsibility and mandate that in every case involving a prolific offender committing a violent crime while out on bail, that they're going to seek detention? Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have the strictest bail policy in all of Canada. In fact, the Saskatchewan has adopted largely our bail policy. We have asked our Crown Council, as I mentioned before, to use everything that they can within the current federal law to address repeat violent offenders. They make independent charge assessments, as I mentioned before, and when they make those assessments and they determine that public safety and the public confidence in the justice system is at risk, they seek detention. What we know from the preliminary data and what I've raised concerns about is that changes to the federal criminal code are needed before our Crown Council and our justice has the tools necessary to actually obtain that detention when it's needed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.